Okay, here we start. Last time we were looking for diffusion of any impurity in other kind of wafers and we suggested that uh, in practice the diffusion of impurities is a two step process and this is particularly true for solid state diffusion. Even in implant actually there is a uh, step, first step which we say implant itself is a pre deposition step and there is a driving ladder there as well. So basically you somehow put impurities first and then push them inside, okay. that is the method of any impurity incorporation. Uh, we did look into the feature that in pre deposition we perform normally in the case of solid state diffusions processes a constant source diffusion at temperature T1 for time T1 and for time T1. Uh, so, we say D1 is the diffusion coefficient at temperature T1 for an impurity which is going to be incorporated in a bulk of another, uh, cons uh, another type. NO1 is the solid solubility or rather active solid solubility at temperature T1 and then we say uh, NXT1 is equal to NO1 error function complement error function X upon 2 read D1 T1 and after a time T1 the net amount of impurities per unit area which you could push in was 2 NO1 under root of D1 T1 by pi. This we did, I am just trying to recollect what we did. You know we have a gap of so many days, so suddenly people also are aware, not aware what we were doing. So maybe just for the recapitulations. We also said that after pre deposition step, uh, the source is stopped. Then uh, source is stopped and then the wafers are reintroduced in the furnace uh, at temperature T2 for time T2 and this process is called drive in impurities are driven inside the silicon wafer at time T2 uh, uh, at uh, temperature T2 the diffusion coefficient of impurities in bulk is D2 and DT product is now D2 T2 and if since the impurities are already fixed by us during pre depositions they only get redistributed during the drive in cycle and the new profile is a Gaussian in nature and if you have solved that we far from the diffusion equation the solution turns out to be NXT1 T2 2NO1 by pi under root of D1 T1 D2 D2 and exponential minus X square upon 4 this is what we did last time and we did say at x is equal to 0, if I make x is equal to 0, this concentration is essentially 2NO1 by pi D1 T1 by D2 T2 under root which is called the surface concentration for the profile. At the maximum concentration occurs at x is equal to 0 and that is called NS, N surface. To calculate junction depth we last time did but we may do again. But uh, so this is the two step diffusion process. However, in this all doing this we assume that the sheet charge approximation is valid and uh, we did say that D1 T1 is much smaller than D2 T2 and therefore that thin sheet of charge is possible. However, this assumption is only an assumption and can be taken care. This was the last time so now we start today something more. Uh, assumption in two state diffusion was that D1 T1 is much smaller than D2 T2. However, even if this condition is not met, we can still evaluate the profile and the method is called using Smith's integral. Those who are very keen to know some old books on diffusion theory are available in the literature, you can google them but I will just give the final answer. Uh, we define two terms alpha is under root D1 T1 by D2 T2 and beta is X square upon 4 times D1 T1 plus D2 T2. Then just take a case D1 T1 is very close to D2 T2 that is not much larger but closer to D2 T2. Then NX T1 T2 is 2 NO1 by pi root of beta to the power infinite e to the power minus y square error function alpha y dy this is called Smith's integral simplification uh, as I said this is a theory of diffusions and this has nothing to do with devices or semiconductors this you can read from Smith charts or Smith integrals otherwise I will suggest you some book on diffusions. 
since I am rarely going to use this, but however I may use it, I am not saying I will never use this and so I will actually have this simplified version of this is 2 n over 1 pi 0 to alpha e to the power minus beta 1 plus alpha square upon 1 upon alpha square d alpha. This is essentially known as Smith integral, okay. So the condition is d1 t1 is very close to d2 t2. The first cases we discussed was when d1 t1 was much smaller than d2 t2. So we say pre departure step is for shorter temperature, a shorter time for a smaller temperature. Drive-ins are for larger temperatures and larger times. Now this method as I say will lead to a solution which I will once you write down I will just say you. So I have a integral which if you are noted down I will show you what is the way uh, Smith integral is given. Uh, since I have used alpha the table from Smith himself is has a alpha instead they have a variable called u the only difference between mine and theirs okay. This is a Smith integral these are the values of alpha and these are the value of beta okay and then these are the values of Smith integral. So the whole integral value can be obtained from knowing alpha and beta please remember alpha is u in this table because Smith used the term u we have been using alpha so that is the term there is no difference between their terms and my term uh, the reference is already given uh, this is from a heat equation semi infinite solid which uh, short table of important integral this appeared way back in 1953 in Australian Journal of Physics by R. C. T. Smith whose integral is name is given to his name. So this depending on alpha values and beta values please remember alpha is up to maximum goes up to 3 whereas beta can vary up to 5 okay. So this is the same table is repeated for higher values of beta 1.3 to 5 okay. So depending on alpha and beta this is just to show you where from these values can be obtained. So I can calculate alpha, I can calculate beta if I know d1, I know t1, I know d2, I know t2 since I know almost this all from two step diffusion process. So I know alpha beta and the value of integral can always be obtained is that clear. So in case d1 t1 is close to d2 t2 please do not use the earlier expression and there is another example we will say you. Now surface concentration at x is equal to 0 is 2 n over 1 pi by tan inverse alpha and if you say alpha is small alpha is under root d1 t1 by d2 t2. So what does that mean d1 t1 is smaller than d2 t2 means alpha is small okay. Tan inverse alpha is alpha when alpha is small. So if I substitute them here ns is 2 n over 1 by pi under root d1 t1 by d2 t2. So you return back to a case when d1 t1 is smaller than d2 t2 in case it is equal to d2 t2 you should use Smith's integral and then use surface concentration as this value okay. I have plotted normalized NXT function with surface concentration of this for various values of normalized distance with dt effective and we find uh, alpha is 0 is Gaussian alpha infinite complementary function and in between is the value. So this is the graph which essentially can I have plotted roughly but this may not be accurate. Uh, the, uh, that means the upper bound and lower bound is Gaussian profile and complementary profiles okay. Why I said this because in complementary function we have said d1 t1 is smaller in the other case we said d1 t1 can be as much as d2 t2. So upper bounds alpha 0 and alpha infinite or large large value. So complementary error to Gaussian is actually the NX profile will appear okay. However as I say 99 cases this may not occur d1 t1 will be always used less than d2 t2 but do not take it my word because I may intentionally set a problem in which d1 t1 will be comparable. So do not just go by it and see, see whether it is equal and then go for Smith's integral okay. 
Okay, so this is what I say in case there is a situation in which d1 t1 is larger than d2 t or equal to d2 t2, Smith's solutions can be used. Alternatively, if d1 t1 is smaller than d2 t2, then normal predeposition will give me a Gaussian profile as we discussed. There is another problem which comes, uh, please remember which I did not say so obviously, but uh, maybe I can go back in my sheet, if you have written on this, okay. I said after the predeposition step, we go for, we, we remove the wafer from the furnace, we will see what are the kinds of furnace we use and impurity source is dropped and then wafers are removed. And in fact what we do is what we say there is a small glass of phosphosilicate sitting on the wafer because phosphorus or not phosphosilicate, impurity silicate. It may be arsenic silicate, it may be boron silicate or it can be phosphorus silicate, glass is sitting on the glass means O2, O3 of that, okay. So if phosphosilicate glass is sitting there, then first we etch that glass, okay, first we etch the glass. Why? Because if we keep that glass, the impurities are within that glass. So if that glass is retained, it is a constant source diffusion because then impurities will keep coming. So the first thing we do is for driving is to remove that upper layer of glass, glass is oxide and therefore we know silicon dioxide HS in HF where silicon does not. So we just put it into HF diff and remove the glass so that any source of impurities then are removed from the surface. Then there is a constant because source is removed so it becomes then a fixed charge kind of impurities inside silicon at the surface and they dr are driven in. But I otherwise say, other day said also that impurities can come out. Okay. I mean there is an isotropic situation at high heat temperature both side impurities will go okay random. So we must stop impurities going out so first thing we do is we start the driving process in oxygen ambient. We push the wafer in furnace at a given temperature T2 and start oxygen inside furnace. So it starts oxidizing the silicon surface and silicon dioxide is a mass for impurities to come out okay it does not allow. So the this step is very important that we create another glass which is not doped glass but silicon dioxide layer and then as the time proceed impurities will go down as the time you want to do for okay. So this step that first you remove the glass is very crucial phosphosilicate glass or borosilicate glass because that will remove the impurity source from the surface okay which is not very clearly stated by many. You say okay, you do pre dip and drive. No, then then it will be pseudo situation because some impurities will be keep coming from the glass itself. Okay, during your driving cycle, then that Smith integral. Why I showed you this because then that Smith integral situation may appear because the, you are also having a source and also driving it. Okay, so it it may have a situation in which d1 t1 can be as close to d2 t2, and therefore this is a situation which you should normally be avoid we remove the glass immediately okay. Okay, what we do is in a real uh, process cycles uh, implant or diffusion may be done maybe fourth, third or fourth step or fifth step uh, even for the channel stopper it may be second step. Since there are too many uh, diffusion uh, pro after every diffusion cycle there is a oxidation but there are number of such temperature cycles before the wafer is completed for his IC. It goes through a large number of temperature time cycles. As many steps you go through in process that many DT products are actually appearing. Every new step you create you have a DT for that process. So the first one which you did it is not only seeing the D1, T1 but also seeing D2, T2, D3, T3, D4 as many DT products it sees it keeps on adding additional DT to the earlier one. This is called DT effective. So as many process steps you go through temperature cycle time cycle those many DT products should get added to the first one. For the second one third fourth should be added for the third one fourth fifth whatever number of cycles you have gone through. So every temperature time cycle adds to the first diffusion some kind of D2, T2 product should get modified which is called DT effective, okay. So here is a uh, some kind of example shown here, it is a I am making an NPN transistor, 
uh, for example, the we have a background concentration of N for example, which is 10 to the power 16 per cc and then we are going to do a base diffusion, which I did at, which has a pre deposition drive-in cycle done at D1, T1, D2, T2. This P tau diffusion, which is I am performing, sorry, yeah, this is the diffusion I did. However, nothing happens to base because base is a constant uniformly doped wafer, so no concentration gradient, so it does not change. However, when I do a emitter, emitter diffusions, which is this, which may be only a wave function profile, it sees another DT product. This base diffusion has additional DT coming from error function timing, okay. That must get added to this second profile. So what will happen? This profile will get modified by this profile. If I have not done it, the junction which was say here actually is not here, but since the profile has changed, it has changed to slightly higher values now. So please remember since the profile actually is be going deeper now, the junction depth changes, the base width is different, collector widths are different and therefore it has to be understood that any time temperature cycle will push the next earlier cycle further ahead inside and that may change the junction depth, okay. If it changes the junction depth, what it also will change? The surface concentration for that area and therefore in your evaluation of device parameters you will have to know what exactly was the base widths, what exactly was the junctions, dopings at the surfaces and that is a very crucial issue in getting a alpha beta of a transistor, particularly in NPN beta is decided by the base width. Larger the base width, smaller is the beta. So we are trying to control this. So what does it mean? For a given beta, I should apply the know how many thermal cycles I am going to go through. And for that value of final, I must get my xj or the base width correspondingly so that I get a beta of my choice. So this has to be a priori decided how much initial I should do, second time when it pushes it, how much it will go and is that base width is sufficient for my beta which I am designing. Okay. So process design also is related to device parameters and therefore very crucial because you, if you do not take care of second diffusion, third diffusions, your base width will keep changing and larger the base width, larger or smaller is the beta and all uh, whether it is digital or analog, we prefer beta larger. Analog of course is a gain function, why in uh, digital we need larger betas? It is a delay time, it is a larger current at the same this, so it will give a smaller delay okay, or fast speed. So larger beta is a requirement for most cases. Of course, in some current sources we may not need, but otherwise we will prefer to have larger betas. So typically this may look like emitter base collector, this is the junction, this is my XBE and this is my XBC, this is my base width and this is of course collector and this is my XE in case you need because and this has to be heavily doped because N plus emitters are doped. So you can see why therefore error function is to be used, firstly emitter should be shallow, this is necessity for some reason we will show you later and secondly its concentration has to be N plus higher. If I put it second driving cycle what will happen? It will reduce its NS further. So I want largest NS available for the emitter. So I will actually have a shallow diffusion with high sol solid solubility. So it is actually performed at little higher temperatures so that solid solubility is higher there, okay. This is and for a very short durations. Same thing can be achieved in the case of implants and we will see that when we look for implant process, we will see that nothing much is changing. Normally uh, same profiles, Gaussian profiles will be obtained. In the case of implant there is no error function profile. It is a naturally Gaussian system and therefore the only difference will be Gaussian systems. But otherwise profiling is the identical to what it is. Uh, there we will see how much depth impurity should go or why not they should be here or there, how to control them, all these issues we will look into it, okay. So I just give an example. So please remember the subsequent time temperature cycle must get added to the driving times of the this because they it will keep adding to that earlier value. In the case of I already showed you 
to calculate the junction depth in a two step process we say this is my surface concentration x is equal to 0 this is my surface concentration 2 n 1 by pi root d1 t1 by now look at it I made it dt effective how many temperature time cycle it has gone through it is dt effective same as d2 t2 should be replaced by 4 dt effective when this is my ns and what is the junction definition that at junction the the concentration of the wafer at x is equal to 0 should be same as uh, x is equal to xj must be same as the bulk concentration or base concentration so nb is ns exponential minus xj square 4 dt effective is that clear at junction where is the junction occurring if this is your diffusion profile let us say I am making Pn. So, this is my Xj below is Nb and there is a profile here. So, this concentration at x is equal to Xj is equal to the base concentration there where the net impurity concentration is 0 and junction occurs and therefore, I substitute Nxt this is Nb equal to Ns this function Nb is known ns is known how ns is known d1 t1 is known dt effective is known no1 is known pi is known therefore ns is known dt effective is known so what we can calculate xj that's the junction depth evaluation can be done i repeat this is the surface concentration ns is 2 no1 by pi what is surface concentration at x is equal to 0 whatever is the concentration is the surface okay at the surface so, this is surface concentration, I know everything of it, predispersion temperature therefore D1, predispersion time so T1, any thermal cycle of driving it sees DT effective, D2, T2, D3, T3, D4, whatever cycles it has might have gone through. So, this is my surface concentration, then the profile is written as NS exponential X this at X equal to XJ, for example, in the case of base collector as shown there the concentration at that point is the base concentration where the net impurity concentration becomes 0. When this is equal to the, this concentration is 0 this minus this is 0 that is what it essentially means junction. If that happens Nb is in its exponential minus this and now from there what do you think Xj will be from here quickly some ln term will appear ln term exponential is that note, noted down of course these these are not specific to any book any book gives this so uh, there is nothing great about this or you can yourself solve for it okay so not very difficult maths going on okay so xj square is 4 dt effective ln ns by nb please remember ns is much larger than nb so this will be a positive number and dt effective is also a positive number so xj will be positive number it will not be minus kind of things anyway so let's in the case of base collector junction we said 2 dt effective ln ns by nb is the junction depth for base collector okay at base collector junction this much base width actually you have to subtract xc from here so that you get the base widths okay so, I can always evaluate junction depth is that clear to you I can always evaluate the junction depth if I know temperature time cycle through which the wafer has gone through during pre deposition driving and any other temperature time cycle with no source okay. If there is a source in between then that will be a Smith's case okay you will have to re recalculate most of it then okay. okay. Now, when I go I do this how do I monitor in the lab what has happened okay. Firstly, I am interested to know for a given time temperature cycle the profile itself, but getting a profile is not very easy okay. The way we do for example, normally I will just show you if my this is my profile, let us say it is a Gaussian for some reason two step or something. So, what I do is I first so like let us take this step this is only junction depth I have shown you the substrate I am not showing. So, first I monitor something 
on this surface at x, this is my x is equal to 0, okay. Then, so surface concentration is here, the is this surface by some amount which is known to me delta x. I etch that top layer by amount delta x. Then on this I do now new measurement, okay. I keep doing this by step and reach junction, is that clear? Every time I get a surface, I have top surface, I removed it, new surface, I removed it, new surface and I will keep getting some measurement value at every surface, okay. And the measurement quantity which I will monitor is the sheet resistance, okay. What I am going to monitor at every etched area is the sheet resistance. So I please remember, so essentially what I am doing is discretizing it as if. <laughs> and I am creating new surfaces and keep monitoring. See if I know my profile at this point, this point, this point, this point, this point, this point, then I can plot the profile. Is that clear? Since I, I will find out this concentration for this surface method profile at that point. So at every time set I will get Nx, okay, every h steps. So I keep plotting Nx1, Nx2, Nx3, Nx4, Nx5 and once I get I get the profile. This is called step profile, I mean this is called the H profiles, you can always get the NXT in real life. There are other techniques of profiling, etching is done in what we call a secondary ion, uh, secondary ion spectroscopy, SIMS as it is called. And the SIMS also basically uh, maybe uh, some other day, uh, second, uh, all spectroscopy in one day I will tell you what. Basically they do same thing in the different Raman spectra, this spectra is basically same process, different sources, different outputs, okay. So is that clear? To get a profile, you will have to start from the surface and start H. So only thing is what is the guarantee you should have? That your HN should have uniform H rate for a given time you will H, okay. So you should be assured that that delta X is same for all the steps you have gone through. The time step has to be such that it exactly gives delta x every time. Otherwise, you know this if it shift and you do not know how much, then you have problems. So in normal sense, this also is an issue in real lab. Uh, people do not want to use H and every new and now and then. So if you dip it in the same solution next, next time, already the so, uh, pH value of the solution has changed, okay. So the H rate of the next for the same time is not same. So there are catches, catch words and how do you do it some other day when technology starts, okay. So is that clear how to profile? So to get a, our ultimate aim is to get a profile let us say, okay. And in many cases I do not need even a profile, I, what I need is, sorry, NS and let us say if this is my NB value itself, this junction. I am only interested in the surface concentration that profile whatever I got, where is the XG? I am satisfied with most derivations I need to do for my real life situations. But in case you need to profile, there is a technique, of course there is an optical technique, there is Raman spectra, many techniques in which profiling can be done. This is the easiest thing one can do by H method. The only catch word here is even there etching is done by uh, some kind of sputters which also does not have constant reads. So whichever technique you do, this guarantee that H rates are constants are not very good. So some mischief is always there in the actual profile to the measured profile, okay. Okay, is that point clear how to monitor profiles? Every surface step you find RS value. So what is this RS? We have already done earlier, but let me repeat again. Uh, we have defined a sheet resistance for uniformly doped semiconductor. Uh, we say R is equal to Rs times L by W where Rs is defined by rho by T and rho is defined by for N type material it is Q mu and N, N is N D, dope this, ionized donors which is N. Since if I know my aspect ratio length to width for a semiconductor bar, then I know knowing Rs I can find the resistance. But in real life I am not interested to find even right now resistance, what I am interested is to know only Rs. So what is the problem with rho by t? Assumption is 
this n is constant, mu is constant, so rho is constant. When this will occur? During crystal growth, we make it uniformly doped materials, okay. Where n is constant and therefore mu is also constant. So there are rho is fixed. Whatever doping I have done, that much rho is known. But when I diffuse, this n is not constant. n is a profile of donors or acceptors. Nx. This nxt whatever you are doing is essentially like this. The profile of carrier concentration is same as doping concentration. So this profile, since it is a profile, it is not a constant value. This is varying function, and if it is a varying function, I must get some average value. So I say Rs is then equal to 1 upon 0 to xj sigma x dx. What is sigma x dx means? Sigma is the inverse of rho, so q mu n x dx from 0 to xj. I multiply it by xj both sides, so xj upon this, just note down. So this is the Rs xj is some kind of this function which I will write down again. Why I wrote nx minus nb? Because that from up to xj the profile has some concentration minus nb is the resistance available for you, okay. Sigma x again is q mu nx minus nb, substitute here, okay. I am not sure whether Plummer has done the, such a detail this, but final answers are available. So if I say 1 upon rs xj is q mu NNP I wrote it because it can be P type dopant or N type, so either of them can be NX, NB may be P type or N type depending on what doping you start and what this, NX minus NB and this is 1 upon XJ. Can you think quickly this is integral of something is averaging, 1 upon X 0 to X FX DX is the average F value, so this is average value. So Q mu N average is essentially what we are getting is 1 upon RS, is that point clear? 1 upon x integral 0 to x fx dx is the average value of fx, okay, very standard method. So this is the average conductivity q mu n x 1 upon is given by 1 upon r s x j. So what we do is essentially there is a nb variation in real life. There will be different base concentrations, substrate may have a different concentration. You may have a nx any profile for that matter. Mu, right now we assume mu is constant, but in real life even that needs to be modified. So what we plot is surface concentration versus Rs, Rs xj at different nb values. Is that point clear? I plot surface concentration for two state diffusion we know, so surface concentration versus Rs xj at different value of this. If I can get, actually I am re-substituting from here this, okay. So what we are essentially saying that if I monitor Rs and if I monitor Xj, what will I monitor? I will monitor Rs for the surface concentration and I will monitor Xj by some other technique. So I will know this. Is that clear? I have already started with base concentration or background concentration, I have decided. So for a given background concentration for given RSXJ, depending on what kind of diffusion you perform, you could have done p-type error function, n-type error function, complementary and p-type Gaussian or n-type, four possibilities. So for all of four, I can do these graphs, these integrals could be put into this graphs itself, okay. I will show you the example. And once I know RSXJ value, I know NB value, I can calculate the surface concentration of the profile. Is that point clear to you? I monitor RS, I monitor XJ. So I and normally this is explained as ohm into microns. RSXJ product is defined as ohm into microns. So do not make it centimeters there. This is plots are ohm into microns against per cc of the surface. So I monitor Rs which is ohm per square, I monitor Xj, I get a product of Rs Xj 
for a, with this four possible profile I will show I can get my surface concentration. What surface concentration in Gaussian two step diffusion? 2 NO1 by pi under root D1 T1 by D2 T2 is your NS. Is that clear? So, if I monitor this and I know D1 T1 D2 T2 NO1, so I can get RS uh, NS from there. Essentially, now I am saying if I do not know one of the times and if I monitor this, I will know that time then. Is that point clear? D, if there is, I do not know D2, T2. Okay. Since I do not know T2, but I now found NS by this measurement. So, NS is 2 NO1 by pi D1 T1 D2 under root of this. So, D2 is known, D1 is known, T1 is known, but T2 is not known. But since NS was known, I calculate the time for drive in. Is that correct? So, this is the inverse calculations can be performed for a known required value of N s. I can actually decide in design how much driving I should perform. Is that clear to you? This is the inverse process I am talking, this is straightforward. But in real life, I will be asked to find what time I should drive in so that I get this much uh, N s value okay, for a given x j. I want for a given xj that ns value, so I must know how much drive in time I should have. Okay, so I say okay, I know d1 t1, I know the temperature of drive in, but I don't know the time for which I should do. So I monitor as if on the device. This can be calculated also, and plot on ns this and get value of ns which will give me t2 time. So this is how the design of process starts. Given something. We go back and figure out how much temperature time cycle I should adjust so that I get the value of my choice. Technology is here, technology is not analyzing this, and technology is something has to be unknown and said this is what I want. If I want, what do I do? Okay. You could say if there is a possibility in some case problem may appear in this boat time for pre deposition is also not so some more data must be provided so that I should be able to get T1 value or T1 is known D1 temperature values. So, all possible combinations are done by some measurements and then we can figure out what should have been done then or what should be done so that these values are attainable. I will solve a problem and solve this. Okay. For example, in the case of constant source diffusion, Nx is Ns error complement error function 2 root dt. Please remember in the case of error fun complement error function, what is surface concentration? The solid solubility limit Ns, N0, okay, which you get from the graph which I will show you. Okay, I will come back to problem then on the shirt. So, since I know N0 from a graph itself or from the tables, I know this value. For the Gaussian it is this, there the surface concentration is this. So, either of the data missing could be calculated if I measure RSXJ and saw, see it on NS versus this graph. So, one of the missing data could be obtained, is that clear? Or to say you actually did a diffusion, you monitor D1, T1, D everything and monitor RSXJ and for that you find R NS. If that value of Ns and this value or this value does not match, that means there is additional mischief you have done somewhere time temperature cycle exceeded or reduced depends on which is lower or higher values. So, there is some calculations which you earlier did is has a mistake which resulted in something different from what you actually monitored. Okay. So, there is a you can also verify your results from. So, what is computer simulation CAT tool does it for this process simulation? given a data final process data I can find the process cycles or for a given process cycle I they can give me what values I will monitor okay. and those if I monitor in real device and if I get them that means my steps are correct. Is that clear both ways I did a process on computer okay this, this is called there are a variety of one is center center or other is old program called supreme then there is a DOS. So, there are many process simulators available. What process simulators need? All the maths available to you which you are doing by hand that should be told to computer. 
here we take some assumptions there you need not because any numerical solution for them for a system is not very difficult you need to know which process someone has already written those programs okay so you just have to tell okay i had a disk what is rs and xj i should get you got it you went through that process in real life and verified whether it occurred or it did not and to a great surprise it may not occur okay that is the worst part of all of it so this is called the first turn around you do something and you don't match then you start guessing which step is overstepping it so you retailer it on the program till two loops one loop three loops you actually get the same values then you know what is the new value you get for which you should do the process the reason is why this doesn't match because the models which i assumed is i assumed silicon doesn't know it so it did behave otherwise so i had to figure out what how did it behave so i keep more changing my models to suit the result okay that's what all modeling people do okay due regards okay so how do i monitor rs there is a standard technique which is called four point probe okay uh, on the doped silicon wafer please remember there is the rs is only monitored on silicon doped area and not on oxide so first thing you have to do is etch out the oxide wherever it is wherever you want to measure the resistivity let's say these are four probes okay they are normally phosphor uh, this material which i forgot so these are very sharp tip these are of course steel but phosphor bronze sorry these are phosphor bronze tips below the advantage of phosphor bronze is they do not have large tensile strength so they do not actually penetrate but they do give very good contacts so where it is uh, if i have we take a case of three points separated by distance r1 and r2 and let's say i pass through a current i in this this is the nodal point and let's say this plus minus from which current is flowing and i want to know potential at point p p is separated from v plus and v minus by distance r1 and r2 this is a case of solution of poisson's equation which uh, some if you are i think you are doing professor vasi's course n times poisson's equation will appear n times continuity equation will appear so you will know more about it in case there is an issue there compared to what i wrote do call me normally i also teach devices many years so i hopefully i am right okay so psi p is irs of course as i say i derived it and i didn't want to derive it for you just to take values rs is the sheet resistance so i can say the potential at psi is essentially given potential name so psi at p is irs upon 2 pi ln r2 by ln plus integral constant because d psi by dx is rho by x a rho by epsilon is that clear this is the poisson statement so we solve this in this now for this i know from two point source vx v plus v minus i can find potential at any point p which is why i didn't take straight line because even if at any angle it doesn't matter for it so i just made it any angle this distance and this distance should be known this theory has been utilized in four probe is that clear why did i show this this poisson equation solving is actually utilized in solving this problem in a four point k four point probe case probes are separated by distance s okay each probe is separated by distance s so this is my plus and let's say the way it is the last two probes i pass a constant current source okay this small r which is introduced there is essentially to limit the current please remember you need to limit a current infinite current should not flow so it is a constant current source and r is limited there okay so i pass a current in the outside probes okay so to say current is entering like this okay then please remember i want to calculate potential at 1 and potential at 2 in between two probes i applied a voltmeter 
between the center probes, I applied a voltmeter. So I want to know voltage difference between these two. Okay. Is that clear? The outermost, I put it a constant current source I and in center two of them. Please remember from here, this probe is how much distance to S. From this, it is only S. Inverse is equally true. From here, it is 2S. Here, it is S. Same way, here it is 2S and here it is S. This is symmetry is what is I am looking for. That is why I use uniform space probes. Okay. So, I calculate psi 1 potential at this. This I call 1, first point, which is from I plus it is S distance. So, psi 1 is I R S upon 2 pi ln S upon 2s is that clear? S upon 2s okay. plus some integral constant a. If I calculate potential here with reference to this ln r2 by r1, I am taking a ratio, difference I am calculating. So, psi 2 is irs ln for this it is 2s s, so it is 2s by s plus a. The difference of potential between 1 and 2 is psi 1 minus psi 2 which is the voltage volt, voltmeter is going to monitor. Okay. If I subtract this, I get I R S by pi ln 2 A removes because that will get subtracted. From here, R S is pi upon ln 2 into V by I. Is that clear? So, what, uh, what did I do? I took a four probe which are fixed on a, this jug, jig, you just push it down, put a current source connect between the last two probes and monitor voltage between the center probes. Okay. That is your V i, i is known from a constant current source which is what I am fixing. So, I know i, I know measured voltage V, ln 2 is numerical number, pi is a numerical number. So, I can monitor my R s, is that correct? 4 point probe is the easiest technique of monitoring sheet resistivity or sheet resistance RS. Okay. Now this, so is that clear? I diffused. I can calculate by Poisson's equation potential at any point separated by R1 or R2 from two points. The current I is flowing through them. Okay. For this probe, potential at this point is I R S 2 pi s upon the other where from we are measuring this is r1 r2 this is r2 this is r1 okay so s upon 2s plus a for the other side if i want to find potential here so i should s 2s upon s okay by using the same method so i get psi 2 is irs upon 2 pi ln 2s by s s s cancel so it is ln by 2 and ln minus ln by 2 but minus minus will become plus so that 2 pi will become pi. So I R S by pi ln 2 is the voltage. Okay. Or R S from here is pi upon ln 2 into V by I. Since pi is known, ln 2 is known. Okay. How much is ln 2? Okay. Log 2 is 0.3010, 2.303 multiply, whatever it comes. So and uh, 3.1415798 is the pi value if you want or 555 by 111 many numbers okay there is a good mathematical research going on even on pi value think of it okay how you define pi okay okay so is that clear how to monitor rs so one of the parameter of that rs xj was monitoring rs so which i did okay is that okay everyone understood okay of course, there are uh, methods which I did not say 3 point probe, 2 point probe, 6 point probes, but some other time. When you are in a lab, you, you actually do many mischiefs. Okay. In the class, I do not want to show you many other mischiefs which we could do and still get correct answers. Okay. Okay. Now, the next value which I want to evaluate is the junction depth. This is called screwing technique, screw. This has a radius r, okay. 
So, this is my junction x j, this is my substrate. So, let us say this is my wafer and I put this screw and actually grew through it okay. and the tip of that r is known to me okay, tip of the screw r is known to me. So, what will it will do? It will etch the doped area like since this is the row area. So, this area will actually go, which area? This whole area will actually go because I will screw remove the silicon from there. Okay. However, what is open to me there? I will see this distance, I will see this distance and I will also see this distance. This is what I will see from the top, is that clear? If I grow it like this, this portion, this portion and a flat portion, this is what I am going to see. So, let us calculate some x j in terms of the available since r is the radius of curvature of the screw down. Okay. So, r is constant everywhere. Okay. Let us say point where it at the surface to the center point is a distance a, it is identical both sides, okay. it is a universe uniform screw. Okay. Let us say from the junction this point this one will be visible to you because the etching will do, but this this portion will this point to this point is B, same as this is B. We call this is R, but we call this flat portion where you see actually the distance is called C2, and from the top surface to this origin, I call distance C1. Okay. This is my maths, nothing great. Uh, Assuming curve are large enough comparatively so that it can be treated linear in most cases. I could say R square is A square plus C1 square. Hypotenuse square is this distance square plus this distance square. So, C1 is under root R square minus A1 square. By same logic, if you look at this B square of course, I, I should have done this, okay. I should have drawn another line here. So, R square is equal to B square plus C2 square. What I am doing is this which I did not draw. So, this is again R, this is B and this is C2. So, C2 square plus B square is again R square. Okay. So, C2 is under root R square minus B square. So, C2 minus what is junction depth? C2 minus C1 is the junction depth. So, C2 minus C1 is xj R square minus B square to the power half minus R square A square to the power half. Now, the way we choose we have made a choice of the screw is this distance is A are much smaller A and B are much smaller than the radio, radius of curvature of the screw which you are used okay, which is large enough. So, we by you can use binomial expansions if A and B are smaller than R, we rewrite this term in by expansion. So, R 1 minus B square by 2 R square minus 1 minus A square 2 R square. So, by subtracting correctly I get x j is a square minus b square by 2. R is given to me from the screw I used, R is known to me. So, what I have to monitor to get x j? A and b, is that clear? So, if I monitor a and b, I have the value of junction depth. Okay. Now, how do I monitor a and b? This portion is known to me, is that correct? This portion I will see, assuming this is linear roughly. Okay, because this curvature is large enough, so it will. This can be treated as a straight line. Okay, so what I do is I take this etched uh, screw where silicon has gone out. I dip it into some copper sulphate plus SCL solution. Okay, if I dip this into SCL plus copper sulphate, SCL removes uh, much of the oxygen around and uh, copper sulphate actually plates the silicon. This is called electroless plating. Okay. This is called electroless plating. So, this portions where silicon is available to you 
and also this lower portion you will get coating there. Now from the microscope I can actually see two annular rings in fact on the top. One has a B dia, 2 B dia, other is 2 A dia. So I can actually monitor 2 A minus 2 B or 2 A and 2 B and therefore I know A and B and since I know A and B I will be able to find out X G. This is called junction lab, uh, this is called screw techniques. There are other methods which are more uh, advanced method like Sims method, optical methods. Uh, this book, our plumber's book has given many other techniques, much more advanced technique. But I just thought you that this is how I did it in 1973 or 72, okay. it worked even now. Okay. okay. So another few things we should be allowed to monitor. When you start a wafer, this was a question I thought you will ask, how do you know NB is P type or N type? Let us say generally wafers are given with all kinds of data. So when you take out of a box, you know which wafer, what orientation, what doping is given. But let us say X man has taken yesterday some wafers and put it on a rack and this man was asked to do the process in the night. Now he never told him which wafers he took. Okay. So how does he know that which P type or N type you started? Okay. So he has to figure out what is the kind of wafer. So this is a hot probe method in which I can find out whether the wafer is N type or P type. Example given is an N type. The way it is done is you have a silicon wafer and you have two probes which is connected by a voltmeter, centers voltmeter that means the, uh, the arm is in the center, it can go on the right or it can go on the left. Okay. One of the probe shown here I can actually has a many a time this probe was used by the what is the probe I can use? Of course tip I will have to change. What could be heater here? The soldering iron itself is sufficient. It itself heats, okay. Usko niche tip karo so you can fix a tip there. So this can become your hot probe. The other terminal of that is connected to a cold area through a voltmeter. Now since it is an N type, yes, since it is an N type, Hopefully it has larger number of electrons than holes that is why it we call n time. Okay. So if I heat the electrons below this hot area or hot volume there actually will energize the electrons okay, because you are heating the this area. Of course this is small tip so it does not expand to the whole wafer or something a small area gets heated and the electrons below that area gets excited. Since they get excited actually, so they start moving. Okay. As they start moving, equivalently positive charge they start putting. After all, whenever electron leaves the lattice, the ionized donors come there. So if electrons start moving, donor starts appearing, ionized donor positive charge. Okay. As this become positive and this essentially is cold, so most of this they actually dissipate their energy and they are collected here. Since electrons are negative, so this probe becomes negative, this probe becomes positive. So this is positive, so the displacement is on the left. So you know if the wafer is in type, the deflection would have been there. Now the question is very interesting, if it is a P type, we still argue that holes move away, acceptors are released and the meter will show opposite polarity, so I know it is P type. Electrons are known particles, okay. so I am 100 percent sure if I hit they will move. Okay. Holes are not particles, holes are absence of electrons, okay. they are in a valence band, these are quantum electrons, they only move in valence band. So when I hit, why should holes move? These are bound electrons to the valence band, so how do they move? And if they do not move, why should fold meter show the other direction? That means they move. This is does not allow it to move. At best what will do? They will jump in a valence band from one side to the other side but there is no whole motion in the valence band, okay. quantum jumps. So how a hot probe still show you P type material which by theory is not valid. Okay. 
the another experiment which I had to do before I this. I many times want to know the uh, for a standard dope wafers, uniform dope wafers. I want to know the mobility of the carriers and I also want to know the carrier concentrations. Okay. One of course is the sheet resistance measurement and you can always get R is equal to R S L by W, but that is understanding that it is a uniform square rectangular this. In real life there is nothing is rectangular though we do solve problems for a good Cartesian coordinates. Okay, so we know rho L by A is resistance. So here is a Hall sample. Okay, it's not exactly like this, but almost like this. I have, I apply a potential across this, which pushes a current I X, and we say V X by I X is uh, an area. Of course, this is my W. This is my thickness. This is my length. So R is equal to rho L by A which are Vx by if I find the potential here then it is this if I substitute in this I get rho Wt by L Vx by Ix. If semiconductor is n type rho is q means n0 plus q mu p p0 but p0 into n0 is an i square so it is an i square by n0 but if it is n type n zeros are larger than p0 so we neglect that so you get q mu n n0 okay the directions i already said this is x this is y and this the top portion is z okay vertically z this is x this is y okay is that okay this is Hall sample. Of course, Hall sample is slightly different from this. It has to be made actually. Sir, that should be downward or which one? That, that direction. It can be either side. The carriers will go out left side or right side. Okay. okay. So, if I do this analysis, which I will not right now do long way. We know that if I apply a magnetic field orthogonal to the motion of electrons going from V plus to V minus, then uh, flowing a current I x and therefore there is an electric field of V x by length which is the E x field, electric field which gives a force of E q, E, e is the force so q V x by L is the electric force. But when I apply a magnetic field it also experiences a Lorentz force which is actually q v cross b in three dimensions okay it's a curl of v and b but in case our case it is v y b z and the net force if the electrons do not move because if the current is zero in steady state q v by b z is q v x must be equal to zero okay so e x from here is minus v by z but B, V y I just can calculate I x upon the last term I calculate it is this. So I now know electric field is proportional to magnetic field through term of this. So what will happen? It will create essentially what if you are written down what I is going to do is the electrons were moving in x direction but as soon as you apply the Lorentz force is orthogonal so it will try to push the electrons on the one side which is the electron that contact will become minus the opposite contact will become plus okay. If the opposite the electrons may move outside and this minus plus will change so that is not important okay. Is that okay? So Hall, Hall, what Hall is trying to do is to relate this uh, Bz term with Ex and I know how much magnetic intensity of the magnetic field I am going so many Gauss okay. There is a standard uh, this Hall probe available to you so you do not really do anything fix B, fix I also everything is fixed you just put your sample okay. but how do we get it is the numbers is that okay. So the Hall voltage that is across if you see the I am sorry since the electrons can be either because this the wherever electrons go uh, sorry this should be minus plus. 
So, you have a potential difference between because the space charge this is again Poisson's equation you can find the Vy, Vy is integral Ex dy and you calculate all of it. So, you get this term Tvy upon Bz Ix is called Hall coefficient. T is known, Vy you monitor, Bz and Ix you have forced this is a constant current. So, so this Rh is called Hall coefficient. So, if I substitute back here, I get concentration N or P is 1 upon Q or H depending on Vy is plus or Vy is minus, okay. RH is positive for holes, negative for electrons. Since I know my N or P, whether the machine in this, I use this resistivity term Q mu and 0 for N type, where mu and therefore is corresponding to this is Rh upon rho or Rh upon sigma. Since sigma can be monitored by 4 probe, uniform is very good, easiest to monitor that Rs L by W. So, I know sigma, I have just monitor Rh. So, I know the mobility of electrons or holes. So, I can get concentrations and I can also get the mobility of carriers. So, Hall effect is a very powerful tool uh, there is a version of Hall, this is called Van der Poel samples. Those who are in technology come to me, I will show you what is Van der Poel, okay. okay. So, these are some measurements, I have left many measurements, there are n number of measurements we can do right now. Let us say if it is 10111 plane, there is a method called XRD, X-ray diffractions, one can find the distance between planes. So, I know XRD, so I know the planes which I am getting because 2D sin theta is known to me. If I want to know the concentration, I have many ESCA method, SIMS method, I can do many optical spectroscopy techniques, I can do optical techniques, okay. It measures epsilon, it measures the uh, dielectric uh, strengths, okay. So, I can, I have many measurements possible both optical, electrical, non-electrical, which FTIR for example, if I want to know whether it is SIO bond is correct. So, if I drew FTIR, FTIR stands for Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy. So, if I do that, I know which bond has some energy associated. So, absorption is maximum there. So, if I pass through and I see a peak down, I know yeah, SIO bond has come. So, oxide is there. Okay. So, I, there are many techniques in VLSI technology you need to actually ascertain. Then you want to see the material, how it looks, texture as it called TMs. You want to monitor the areas, then you can do ACM, scanning electron microscope. So, if you really go to a good VLSI lab, technology lab, there has to have so much analytical instrumentation apart from standard CV, IV, which all of us are great about, IV and CV. That is what we think is end of it. But you are needed to do many, many measurements before you arrive at something tangible, okay. So, please remember we all, whenever we make a process, we have wonderful samples, hall probes, hall areas, we have measurement for sheet resistance areas, we have many test areas, one chip is dedicated sometimes five, four corners, one center, just to monitor the process, okay. This is the test chip. So, one of the most important thing in designing a process is to design that test area. How do I know what I did is okay individually and that is most important in the case of test. So, some of the tests which we do is shown here, these are least complete, but I have given you how many possibilities. Okay. And uh, if you are really going to someday in TSMC or something, you will never know the other technique because you will be in a group you do only simulation and you, so I am in technology, in TSMC or any foundry, you are not allowed to move out of some 10, 20, 10 by 20 feet area, your cocoon, okay. No one knows what is next door, okay. okay. Uh, any foundry, global foundry is coming, I think many, some of you, of course you are in first year, second year student may appear. So, most foundries do not allow too much leeway. Only labs like us you can move, but here also now there is so many committees, you cannot enter here, you cannot enter. So, you probably do not know what is going on in the next room, okay, unless your friend tells, okay, uh, which he may not nowadays, 
you will hide it okay isko kyon pata lag gaya okay i have example to solve uh, quickly before we quit for the day uh, i actually did a solution for this use of graphs okay so i have a p type doping to be done in n type and i started with n type dopant n type wafer which has 4 into 10 to the power 16 per cc as background concentration i did a pre deposition t1 at temperature t1 of 950 degree centigrade these values are typically for a 5 micron process they will be to scale down by many ways when i go to a nanometer scales why i use this 5 nano 5 microns because this gives number some big enough to see something happening okay and i did pre deposition for 10 minutes <laughs> No, you don't write down right now. First, I will find out. So I figured out. I want to find out D1 at 950 degrees centigrade. So as I said, the graph is in kelvins. So 1000 upon 1223 is 950 plus 273 is 0.817 or 82 roughly. So here is a graph which is a, taken from Fair's paper. This temperature, yeah, it's visible. good this is ratio 1000 by 1223 as for example i am looking this is the diffusion coefficient and this you can see this line is the line for phosphorus and boron any other impurity will have to go for other this what is we are implanting what is we are diffusing boron in the anti wafer so for this curve roughly 0.2815 or whatever it is D is 10 to the power minus 14 centimeter square per second. Is that okay? Any other value you have to go up and monitor. Okay, is that clear? Any other 0.75 or 0.75? So this is the value. This will be around 1.5 to the power minus 13. Depends on the ratio. Yeah, it will be. This will be true. So it will be slightly less. Okay. Ye log me log hai. Please remember, each is also a log, okay, log of log. Okay, so you have to also think how far you are away. Fifty percent point is around point three, okay, of that. Sixty percent is point four or point five. So some guesswork, थोड़ा सा. Okay, so this is the first graph you will use to find out what is d one. So I got d one is equal to ten to the power minus fourteen. Temperature. I have fixed, but time I said 10 minutes, which is 600 seconds. Make it seconds. So d1 t1 is 6 into 10 to the power minus 12, or under root d1 t1 is 2.45 to the power minus 6 centimeters. So this is pre-deposition data. One more data I missed, but maybe I'll come back that. You know. Then I did driving. At after, of course, as I say, I removed glass and then start driving in oxygen. some nitrogen is also added okay and that by did at 1100 degree centigrade for 60 minute driving is too big actually i am doing too deep is junction right now this number was just chosen so that junction depth is big enough okay so again i what is the temperature 1373 degree kelvin ratio of 1000 to 1376 is 0.7 or something so we go back on the graph again and uh, what are or here is the 1100 degree centigrade also so correspondingly you find the d this is centigrade so you can use centigrade come to this graph read correctly from the correctly in the sense nearest to that you cannot correctly monitor it but roughly close to the value 1.4 and 1.5 is okay but 2 i am not agree because 2 is a larger number there okay is that okay so given a temperature i can find diffusion coefficient for any species and particularly from gas boron or phosphorus so if i do this i get d2 4 into the power minus 13 cm square per second t2 is 3600 seconds then is uh, how much 60 minutes so 3600 seconds So D two T two is product of the these two, which is one point four foot and four minus nine centimeter square, 
or root d2 t2 is 3.79 into 10 to the power minus 5 centimeters. So, I know under root d1 t1, I know under root d2 t2. Uh, I also want to know NO1, I also want to know NO1 that is for pre-depression temperature 900, okay, 950. This is linear scale, please remember the lower scale is linear and this is log scale, okay. So, 950 is somewhere here, which species, which uh, crafts I should use, the, this one or this one, lower one, active concentrations. So, for phosphorus at 950 roughly, you read from here, 950, this value, okay. No, no, we are, we, oh sorry, sorry, for, thank you. So, for boron, maybe I might have taken the wrong number, so just check it correctly. So, you think it, it is p n junction instead of n p n junction, okay. okay. Maybe I in night I did mischief, maybe, but okay. So, you read this. So, no, no, I think I read correctly. So, I get uh, at 950 degree, boron has, uh, sorry, for boron, roughly it is okay, not very wrong, okay. Actually, I took boron data but wrote phosphorus there. So, you have started with N D. So, this 3 into 10 to power 20 per cc is your surface concentration or uh, this uh, for the yeah, surface concentration in solidity is same. Now, I want to evaluate R S from R S X J graph, okay. I have done Gaussian profile two step diffusion. Okay, I have four graphs. Okay, well, these graphs are now all loaded on the site. So, you can choose this. Please download and get it prints. This is your two step diffusion profile. These are four graphs I may show you. This is for n type complementary air function. I am plotting surface concentration versus RSXJ at different in the. This is for p type error function. This is n type Gaussian and this is p type Gaussian. So, whichever is the this you should correspondingly choose the graph. So, in our case it is p type Gaussian which we have to use. So, what we do is just I will come back to get R s first I should know n s. From this graph if I know n s for a given n b what can I calculate? R s x j, is that correct? For given n s, how can, how will I get n s? 2 n o by pi root d 1 t 1 upon d 2 t 2 is surface concentration for Gaussian. So, I, I know that value, for this I calculate R s x j, is that clear? So, once I get R s x j value from this graph, then I can calculate xj, how I calculate xj, 2 root d2 t2 upon ln n surf upon nb to the power half, this is the Gaussian profile at x is equal to xj, n is nb. So, I solve this and I get xj of 4.35 microns, is that clear? Previous slide, okay, sorry. No, 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 so rs xj I will monitor from that graph because n surface I know, n b I know, so from Gaussian profile for p type I know how much is R s x j and what is the unit? Ohm microns, please remember, okay. Is that okay? From the graph, what will monitor surface concentration known for given n b, go down and figure out what is R s x j that value you are noted down from the graph, okay. Now, the question was always asked every year by many that sir, if so much simulation is possible, Centrus does so well. No, whether Centrus does correct or not, who will know? Because program is only a program, okay. So, this is called analytical starting point. We know where, where we are, okay. So, verify you are right, okay. 
these days you do not have to do everything is not correct. You cannot do 100 percent on system. You ought to know what system is doing. Okay. Even that you do not know, you just run programs. So then also you do not know what models they are used. Okay. Is that okay? So let me write two, two slides. Is that okay? So I know this profile, so this is my surface concentration. So I can get RSXJ. Is that okay, all of you? So I calculate XJ from 2 root D2 ln surface by this. I know all values. So I get 4.35 micron as my junction depth. And I also has evaluated RSXJ from the graph for given N, N surface and NB. Is that clear? So what is to be found out now? RS. RS XJ is known, XJ is known, so RS is known. Just note down, I will show you the final answer. So all of you will bring these sheets during exam in this water, say till mid same if I finish oxidation. So bring oxidation also. If I do not, then you bring only diffusion. If I finish implant, then you also bring implant profiles. So all this data is already created from various papers I have copied. These are available on our course website. Please download and print. I am not going to supply you any of these sheets. I have forgotten, so be forgotten. Okay, that is it. Okay. Is that okay? So since RSXJ was found as 200 ohm microns from the graph, for this 4 into 10 power 16 and surface concentration of 1.2 minus 9 into 19 per cc, RS is 2 upon 4. अरे अभी आपने हाँ बोला उसके बाद ही मैंने इसके बाद ये डायरेक्ट लिखो ना यार ये सब्सटिट्यूशन तुम करो सी आई एम डूइंग इट बिकॉज़ आई एम फर्स्ट टाइम डूइंग इट सो आई आई हैव टू गो थ्रू स्टेप्स यू कैन डायरेक्टली राइट द सब्सटिट्यूशन आई आल्सो राइट स्टेप बिकॉज़ फ्रॉम देयर रफली आई नो आई एम राइट इन the reason is obvious that at least mistake in one I figure out the rest is correct. Otherwise, we do not know which place it went wrong. Okay. Some system you should create. Okay. Is that okay? 4.35. So, RSXJ from the graph we figure out is 200 ohm micron divide 4.35 to 200. Sheet resistance is declared as ohms per square. 200 by 4 point, which is 46, roughly 46 ohm per square is the sheet resistance. Okay. Inverse would have been what? I monitored RS, I monitored XJ, then calculated NS, and then saw something is missing in pre departure and drive in cycle, figure it out what was that. Okay. Is that the method clear to you? So these graphs help you to actually get, these are integrals. So it is difficult to solve every time integral. So these are put into graphs directly, okay, plotted for you. Okay. This finishes the diffusion techniques. Tomorrow we start with techniques. This is only diffusion, maths, physics we did. Maybe it is due little physics left, we will do it and we will look into how actual diffusion is performed. <laughs>